All right, so it came on. It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock at night. Why am I awake? I don't know, because I knocked out earlier. But I know I have work to do, so I know I, I was determined to come on and do it and give the word. But uh, my phone needed to charge. With my phone needed to charge, waiting on it, I knocked out. So I got at least an hour of sleep, which is good. Which means for me, for, um, which means for me, for, uh, tonight, oh boy, I can be awake all the night long because it's just how it goes. 15 minutes goes a long way and, um, okay, I gotta put on my, the, uh, hold on. All right. All right, here we go. Oh, I've been my PJs. Why? Because my my other pair of pants was um, dark. Mosquitoes like it. So anyway. All right, so um, I heard the Lord saying, Who do you say I am? The word of the Lord came to me saying, Who? Do you say I am? The word of the Lord came to me saying, Who do you say I am? I am who I am. And just now it's all very big tarantula, but that's all right. I'm not scared of it. Um, I heard Oba saying, Who do you say I am? Let us pray that you'll have your way, that you'll have your perfect and matchless way that you are. Almighty God, and I just, um, your mic, so have your perfect way. The word of the Lord came to me saying, who do you say I am? And I hear, I am that I am. The God of Israel, Yahweh, Jesus, yes, Yahweh, Jesus, he's the one, hallelujah, who told Moses, to tell them, I am who I am, sent me. When Moses asked and he said, who do you say, who should I say sent me? The Bible tells us that Abba answered and he said, tell them, I am who I am, sent you. This is my name for per perpetual generations, which means forever generations, which means all generations. All right. So I heard Abba saying, who do you say I am? Go and tell the people that the identity of a Christian lies in these, um, these few words. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Now, the Bible tells us that Oh, but Jesus, he asked, um, he asked that question to his disciples that were present there. He asked that question and he said, who do you say I am? Now, people all around had their opinions. People all around had their, um, their thoughts, their opinions what they what they whatever they wanted to say about him they all had thoughts and opinions about what they wanted to say and just like that they were calling of uh, over jesus they were saying well a great prophet has risen among us um he's a healer or he's a teacher or um he's you know some said the son of david he's the messiah um or he could be the messiah um they they all had opinions about him, all kinds. Some said he was James's James's um half brother or James's brother. Um some says, you know, uh he was Mary's son. Some says um he was Joseph's son. Oh everybody had an opinion. Everybody said, Isn't this Joseph um son the carpenter? They all had some kind of opinion about him. They all had some kind of already 
uh, decided identity about Jesus. They already called him whatever they felt like. They called him whatever they felt like calling him, right? They didn't, they didn't have that, um, that assure, that, that, that assurance or the way that Peter was about to speak. So when Abu Jesus said, who do you say I am? And Peter, yes, bold, brave Peter, he said, you are the son of Yahweh. You are the son of the living God. And Abu Jesus stopped and he said, bone and flesh has not revealed this to you, Peter, but my father who is in heaven. So he immediately pointed us to the spirit realm, which means that in the spirit realm, things will be revealed. In the spirit realm uh, is where we get our teaching, is where we get our guidance. The Bible says as many as are led by the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of God, are sons of him, sons of God. So when people had their opinions about what Jesus is and whose son he was and which prophet. And, you know, he had asked him, who do, who do people say? Some say that you're Elijah. Some say, you know, even when they were asking John the Baptist, they said, who are you? Who, who, who are you? You're baptizing in the Jordan. We see that. But who are you? And some called him Elijah. Some said this. Some said that. You know, they had all, they all had their opinions. Okay, it's locked. They all had their opinions about John the Baptist as well, right? But the disciples understood who John the Baptist was. The Bible says when Jesus was uh, speaking and he said, um, you know, this is whom has been spoken. Behold, I send Elijah before me to prepare the way. And I say to you that Elisha has already come and they did to him what they wished. The Bible says that the disciples understood that he was speaking about John the Baptist. So people can have their opinions about us. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you a uh, Christian? Who are you Christian woman? Who are you Christian son or Christian man? Who are you? People have their opinions. They'll tell you, hey, they'll call, they'll call maybe your family's name if it's a popular name or if it's not a popular name because we know that parents tend to leave uh, traits that are very much uh, marked by what they've done in their lives. So if they, oh, this is the family of, or if is this a family of, and it, this, oh, and that's that son and that's that daughter. But father's saying that your identity is not what people think of you. Your identity does not lie in what people think of you. Just like people can have their opinions about who Jesus is, but it all comes down to the fact of who he is. Who, I mean, the, rea the reality of who he is. And the only person or the only one that could reveal who he is, is who? Yahweh, the Holy Spirit of God, right? So when Peter answered and he said, you are the son of the living God, Yahweh. You are the son of the living God, Yahweh. So he said, nobody told you this. Bone and flesh has not revealed this to you. Your neighbor didn't come and tell you. Your best friend didn't come and tell you. Your, your, um, your employer didn't come and tell you. Your teacher didn't come and tell you. Your wife didn't come and tell you. Your husband didn't come and tell you. Your child didn't come and tell you. But the Holy Spirit, my Father in heaven, he pointed straight to the spirit realm, which tells us something very, very important. As Christians... People have their opinions about us. Oh, she's the crazy one who goes into the city and preaches. Okay. Oh, that's just, um, that's just Nicholas's daughter. Who's Nicholas? 
we never had an identity to. Oh, that's that's um, we don't know who she is. She used to live here, now she's there, and we're boy. Okay, who is he? He was the one who did um drugs on the side of the street. Oh, um, he was the one who was in prison. Who is he? He is the one who um who drank every night at a bar. He's the one who was watching pornography and they caught him uh, in the act and they also caught him so and so and so and they, they would like the things of this life tend to stick very quickly on those who are in this physical world because people can easily identify uh, physical attributes to a physical world the physical attributes to a world's kind of thinking so the identity of what the world thinks can sometimes, most of the times, many times, stick on us. It can be branded on us far more than what is known in the spirit realm. You know how we have this habit of saying, Father called and then he equipped? Indeed! He says he will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, which means he'll use all the things that are rejected, neglected, um, or what is what's that word you used again? Unesteemed, unloved, uh, everything that he was, he will use it to confound or frustrate the intelligence of the wise and the prudent because they think that they've got it made receiving certificates from a, a, a university or institution that has piled together limited knowledge and said, congratulations, you graduated with it. He will use the foolish things of this world. For example, how he used Jacob. Jacob was not the eldest. Jacob should have not gotten a blessing in a normal setting. Jacob was a liar, a scoundrel. He was like, he was like the, the con man. Jacob was like the con man at first. But God's favor was on Jacob. God's favor was on Jacob because Jacob was the one selected. God knew that under all that muck and that grime, there was a heart that was ready to shine. All under that, that filth and that whatever ways he had, that was conniving or that was deceitful or, you know, how, how Esau said, isn't he rightly called Jacob because he's a deceiver? Under all that muck was his good heart that was obedient to Yahweh Jesus. So Jacob, his identity in the spirit was in who? was in God Almighty, right? His identity, his identity in the spirit was called chosen. He went from being deceiver and scoundrel and all these bad things that the, the world had branded him with and rightly so that he did trick people. But beloved, he was called Jacob, yes, his name did announce it, just kind of like um, Jabez. Jabez was named Sorrow. His mother named him Sorrow. And God had to change Jabez's name. So when people have their opinions about Jesus, he's a prophet, he's a shopkeeper, he's Mary's son, He's Joseph's carpenter's son. He's, he's this, he's that, he's James' brother. He's this one's cousin. He was a fisherman that was with Peter on them. Yes, it was him. He was the one, wasn't he the one with the prostitutes and them? He were hanging around them. He's the friend of the tax collector. That's who he is. Yeah, it was him. It... When Abba Jesus asked, who do you say I am? The disciples had walked with him. They had walked with him amongst a whole selection of people. All different walks of life. 
from the demon possessed which he hugged and he caressed to the the drunken man at the bars with the prostitutes or the harlots i don't know if that's even a, a legal word to say now but anyway to the with the harlots and the the prostitutes to the tax collectors or the money men the the you know what we would call the elite now to the um all kinds, all kinds. Even the Pharisees, because Nicodemus came out of that. So it, it was like they had seen him amongst all these, these people. He associated with them. You know, we like to say they're, they're acquaintances. He associated with them. He loved on them. The disciples were asked, who do you say I am? Now, besides these things, they saw him raise the dead. They saw him heal the sick. They saw him walk on water. They saw him calm the storm. Until they had to ask, they had to declare, they had to make that statement and say, the winds and the waves obey him. He walks on the water like a concrete platform. This Jesus, what manner of man is this? This is not an ordinary man this is not some this is not your neighbor john next door or your neighbor sally next door this is no ordinary man what manner of man is this you know and the word says that abba said in his word come Come, come closer. Draw near to me, I draw near to you. But come, let us reason. Come, let us reason. If you've got questions, he's ready to answer. You've got to reach in the realms of the spirit. For God is a spirit, and we worship him, must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. So, when he asked that question, who do you say I am? It's an intimate question. It's a personal question. It's a question that kind of brings us into, not kind of, it brings us into identifying ourselves with who we can proclaim him as. Which is why it's important to know who he is. Who do you say I am? Because when you walked into the um, hospital, when you walked into the hospital and they told you that you were and they called a name over you and they said, you're a that patient. That became your identity. Or that becomes somebody's identity. But who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say I am? He's announcing. Who do you say Yahweh? He is ready to become. He is. Everything that we are, we have need of in that moment. Who do you say I am? Woman at the well? Hmm. They said, did I get it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. They said, ooh, big one. They said that you've had five men, five husbands. And none of them is your husband. Who do you say I am, woman? 
And she said, Sir, I perceive you're a prophet. Her perception of Jesus came from prophecy. Her perception of Jesus came from him telling her about her life. Her perception of Jesus was also that he had something called living water that when he asked a question, the spirit man would begin to drink and be satisfied. That she would understand that she's a sinner. And he said he didn't leave her in question. He never left her with a confused expression. He said, sir, I perceive you're a prophet. And we know that when the Christ comes or the Messiah comes... He will reveal all things. And Obi Jesus answered her question. He said, I who speak to you am he. So now she could identify with three things. She could identify that he was a prophet. And she just received a prophecy that was true. She could identify that he was the Messiah. Well, that he was the living water that she needed. And when she said, give me this living water, he asked her a question. And then all of a sudden, her spirit man became very light when she answered and she said, it's true. Then she could identify. So, so she identified him as living water. She identified him as a prophet. And now she's identifying him as the savior. And she's understood that she's a sinner. So the woman at the well could also answer this question with precision. She understood from the realms of the spirit who Jesus was. So if she would have been present there when he was asking, who do you say I am? She would say, you, you are a prophet. You are the Messiah. You are living water. You, you're everything that we need. And if she had a relationship with God, she would have proudly identified and said, God with us. She would have said, you are God with us. Because the Bible says your teacher will no longer hide from you. I will come to you. He says, I will not leave you fatherless. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So the identity of Jesus and who Jesus is, is personal, but it's revelation in the spirit realms. Who do you say I am? It's like asking, who are you in me? Jesus is asking, what is your identity in me? Well, Abba, in the face of battle, I am more than an overcomer. I'm a warrior in Christ, more than a conqueror, seated in heavenly places with him. I have boldness and authority in you. That's who I am. I'm a daughter or a son, whatever you want to call it. I'm a son of God or a daughter of God. You know, it sounds very funny that I should say son. But I am a son of God walking after the spirit of your presence. Who are you in me? I'm a prophet ordained to nations, called forth from before the foundations of this world, from my mother's womb. Who, do, who are you in me? I am healed and I am the blessed of the Lord. Who are you in me? You, you got to identify. You got to step out and say, well, if you are a savior and I know you are, I'm your disciple. I'm a sinner saved by grace. What else? 
If you are a teacher, and I know you are, I'm your student. Miss Arosa Kilaha. Who do you say I am? I'll tell you. If you are the, um, what should I call you, Prime Minister President? If you are the owner of heaven, and you are Prime Minister of heaven, President of heaven, owner of heaven, then I am a citizen of heaven. Mm. Who do you say I am? You see, when Peter answered that question, and he said, you are the son of God. At the moment that Jesus was baptized, did he need to get baptized? No, but he did say, follow me which means that people were looking at him which means that everything that he said they would do so when he got baptized and came out of the water and it thundered and some said Elijah and some said this and some said that and the voice in heaven said this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased aha this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Identify. Identify that if he is this, then you are this in him. Identify. Who are you? Who do you say I am? Well, Lord, if I am broken, you're the one that heals me. If I am crushed, you're the one that mends me. Who do you say I am? If I am in flight, you are the wind beneath my wings. And if I am an eagle, you are the strength in my wings. Who do you say I am? If you are hungry for the word, who do you say I am? Ha! Huh. I am the living bread of life. Come down from heaven. Eat! <laughs> who do you say I am? You are the living bread come down from heaven. The bread that is greater than the manna you rain down to our forefathers in the days of Moses. Who do you say I am? Well, Lord, if I am building something, you are the foundation that was laid. If my parents were drunkards, if my parents were sex addicts or fornicators, if they were drug addicts, if they were, uh, I can't think of a murderers, if they were, uh, religious, if they were, you get it, if they were all of these things, or any of these things, when people look they're going to say, you're this and you're that, and you're the daughter of who and who, and you're this and that, and that's what your identity is. But beloved, this is why Abba Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, Nicodemus came in the middle of the night, kind of like how I'm coming to you here now at 2 o'clock in, well, in the morning, 2.37, where he came in the middle of the night and he said, You saw me with the, the bunch of chief priests and Pharisees and Sanhedrin. You know, that's my good like, daytime job. I'm just there for, you know, maybe it pays well. Maybe, maybe family tradition, whatever. And Nicodemus came and he asked over Jesus. He said, tell me, what shall I do? to enter the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. 
And Oba Jesus said to him, unless a man, meaning human being, is born again. I'm sorry. Unless a man, a human being, is born of the water and the Holy Spirit, he shall not enter into heaven. And Nicodemus now, because he was like, he, he wanted to enter heaven. He saw what Jesus was doing. He, instead of reaching in the spirit realms, because he didn't have the Holy Spirit, Jesus wasn't yet crucified. He, instead of reaching in the spirit realms to find out, he said, can a man, can a grown man enter back into his mother's womb? And come out again? He reached into the natural realms. He reached into the realms where our physical body and our mind, our carnal mind takes us. He reached into the realms where Satan tries to attack us. That's where Nicodemus reached. He didn't reach in the realms of the spirit because without the Holy Spirit, a eh, Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And when Abba Jesus spoke, Nicodemus would have now gone along and he would have said things like, what did he mean? And he said, Abba Jesus, I hear him saying something like, you're not far from the kingdom of God. I hear him saying something like that. You're not far from the kingdom of God. Because he drew near. You had to understand that he drew near. And when he drew near, ha, Jesus drew near. That's why Father says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Your identity is not in this world. Your identity is not in the color of your flesh. It's not in the color of your hair. It's not in the color of your eyes or your skin. Your identity is not in your physical attributes. Your identity is not in how much money you've got. Your identity is not in how much popularity you've got. Your identity is not in who your parents were. That's your physical birth. When we step up in the spirit, when we rise up in the spirit, we begin to search our identity in the spirit. Because our father, God, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, he has a greater identity for us. He has a bigger identity for us. He has something that supersedes the realms of this planet. Something that he says, behold, okay, wherever you are. He says, behold, I give you authority. What? How are you going to give me authority? I'm just carry. I'm dust without your presence. I'm not loved. I'm not liked. I'm, I'm not popular. I'm not rich. I'm not none of these things. How could you give me authority? Because you are mine. Now I have to go back and I have to. What does that mean? And I let his spirit speak to me. All these things. Your physical dad might have rejected you, but Jesus selected you. He welcomed you into his arms. Why? Because he's your father. He is your father. He is our father. There is no one else that can take his place. When you come into the spirit realms and you're born again of the spirit. Peter would have received that answer because he had a... Okay, ouch. My back. Okay. Go there. Just cover up there. Peter would have received that answer because he had a boldness in him. Oh yeah, Peter was the bold one. Peter was the bold one. That's why Abba Jesus, he replied this to him. He said, bone and flesh hasn't revealed it to you, but my father who is in heaven. And Peter, 
I say to you that you are Peter. You were Simon, but now you're Peter. You just became the rock. You just became solidified by the what? By the spirit of the living God, which was what? The water. So he said, you just became Peter. You were Simon before. You were sand. You were like all the rest of them, but you just became Peter. You just became solid. And upon this rock, Peter, I'll build my church. So upon what rock? Upon the rock that was formed by the spirit of the living God. Upon the rock, upon this rock, I build my church. The dust became rock when the spirit of God entered in. Now we're seeing the manifestation of Jesus Christ coming forth on the earth. But more than that, we're seeing us as just dust becoming now a born of a born again citizen of heaven upon this rock i'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail which means that father is now solidifying what was known in the physical realm as just sand who do you say i am abaji said i'll give you the keys oh i take it I'll give you the keys. When the spirit comes into the dust, that's the identity. When the spirit comes into the dust, it's only then that even in the physical realm that the dust will live. But when the spirit comes into the dust, when the living water from heaven reaches the dust, come on somebody, when you're thirsty, when you're at your lowest low, when life has thrown you so many things and you're burnt down to ashes, beauty is about to be revealed. Beauty is the thing that will rise up. I came to give you beautiful ashes. He said, beauty is what I'll give you. So when the living water comes into the dust, when the spirit begins to solidify the sand, this is the foundation that was laid. Because when we're born again of the spirit, we become the ones that Yahweh has predestined, has foreknown that we would be transformed into the image of his son. Whatever number that is, you are that, and we are that came on the earth. Whatever number you are, this human, this num, this. Okay, you are the seven thousand human to be born. You are the seven thousand. Um. Okay. Let's say. Mm, I didn't say that well. Let's say. You are the. Uh. Uh. Let's see. 144, because we love that, because it's a chosen number, right? Let's say that you are the 144,000 Christian to be born in the realms of the Spirit. You are 144,000 person to be made in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ, to become as Jesus is on the earth. So when... The living water goes into the sand. You have to understand. Hallelujah. You have to understand that the identity, oh, Sharabosae, Jesus Christ gives us the identity in both realms. That's why it is written, well, how did you say, um, Israel? Israel, he reigns and he rules in every realm. He reigns and he rules in this physical realm. He reigns and he rules in the spiritual realm. He gave us victory in both of them. All right. So when Abhijay said, who do you say I am? For every season, he is exactly what we have need of like abraham when abraham was uh told hey you love me you're obedient to me yeah give me your only son isaac that was abraham's response 
Not just that he shook his head, not just that he said yes, but he took Isaac to Mount Moriah and he was ready to sacrifice him. And when that time came where Abram lifted the dagger to Isaac, when that time came and he heard the voice of the angel saying, nope, don't do it. For now I've seen that you will withhold nothing from me. I will test you to see who you say he is. For Abraham, when Isaac said, Father, you know, he's tied up, he's on the uh, altar, and a knife is coming down, a dagger is coming down. Father, where's, I see the wood and I see the fire. Where is the sacrifice? And Abram answered, and he said, Yahweh will provide, God will provide, Jehovah will provide, depending on how you know him, right? So he will provide the sacrifice. Abram already declared in the realms of the spirit, yeah, you've asked me for Isaac and I am prepared to give him to you. You gave him, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Okay, you gave him, you can have him. You could take him back. I know that. But I know you're also the one who provides everything that I have need of. And if I could have a sacrifice that is pleasing to you, if I could have a sacrifice that is pleasing to you, that you would not ask me for my son. Abram's heart was breaking inside. Which is something I got to experience when I lost my girl. If, if, the scop could pass from me. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. I can't do this. This is probably some sign, so I'm not going to do that. That's why I'm like this, like a playing fish. <laughs> but if it is possible, pass this cup from me. Otherwise, in that moment that I need, whether it is on to crucifixion, whether it is unto death, that I might be a witness of who you are. If you brought me to this hour, shall I say, Father, for this hour, um, why have you brought me to this hour? Deliver me from this hour? Is that why you brought me? I'm here to be the savior. What, should I say, nope, don't. I don't want to go to the cross. I'm not going to go to the cross. Should I give in, in other words, to my physical identity? To all the pain that I feel in my body, in my muscles, in my flesh being ripped off, should I give in to my physical identity right now? No. So now we're speaking in the realms of the spirit. Father, not my will. Flesh has to die. Spirit has to live. Not my will. But thy will be done. Hmm. Who do you say I am? Because when you get that revelation of who Jesus is, it'll take you very far. I'm not saying that you'll have the best of best of luxuries and abundance in the world. I'm not talking about the things that perish. I'm talking about imperishable things. I'm talking about treasures laid up in heaven. I'm talking about things that Nobody can steal. Moth can't destroy. And rust wouldn't destroy either. Moth wouldn't eat. I'm talking about treasures laid up. So when we get that identity in Jesus, it stabilizes us. It solidifies us. In both physical realm and spiritual realm. Because whatever is coming forth in the, the physical realm has to come forth from the spiritual realm. Which is why when somebody attacks in the spirit realm, you've got to block it. You've got to send it back. 
you got to rebuke it and send it back. Because if you don't, then it's going to manifest. So, when Abba Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Well, if you call to me to prophesy, you are the spirit of prophecy inside of me. Who do you say I am? You're the spirit of prophecy. You're the testimony of angels. You are the testimony of even the saints. The saints. You are the testimony of the saints. Who do you say I am? When people question that God is unchanging, you are the unchanging father. So the sons of Jacob are not consumed. There's so many things that we can say. Everything that you can name in that hour, he is. In that moment, he is. Who do you say I am? Whatever you need. And even the things that you want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want according to my will and my way. Who do you say I am? You're the good shepherd that keeps me. You lead me in ways of righteousness. You lead me through a valley of death and a shadow of death when I'm scared. You're the one that comforts me. You're my comforter. When I need advice, Papa, you're my mighty counselor. When I'm rejoicing and when I'm happy, when I have got something to rejoice about that you've done, you're wonderful. Who do you say I am? In the midst of chaos, I've got the perfect peace because you are the prince of peace. When I look around and I don't see, I don't see people. I don't see companionship. Who? Do you say I am? You are Emmanuel, God with us. I said, you can name them, he will become them, because he is. Who do you say I am? You are Jesus the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Yes, you're the one on the battlefield front. You're the stone in the hand of of the one that brought down Goliath. Yes, you are. You are the strength in Samson's hair grown back. Yes, you are. Who do you say I am? You are the one that shut the mouths of the lions. You are the one that commands the angel armies of heaven. You are the champion of champions. That's who you are. Who do you say I am? No, identify it. When you can't even count on your brother or those you're related to by blood. Who do you say I am? I'm your friend, your best friend. I six closer than a brother. Who do you say I am? When your prime minister and your president is messing up very badly in the country, who do you say I am? You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The government of heaven rests upon your shoulders and I'm a citizen of that place. Who do you say I am? When darkness is clouding around, when this world is becoming too cloudy, too dark, not cloudy, but you know what I mean. I wanted to say um, tainted because I don't want to identify clouds with it, but, um, who do you say I am? You are Yahweh who bowed the heavens and come down with darkness under his feet and you crushed it. You overcame it. With one word you said let there be and light came. You are the light of the world that ushers in light. Who do you say I am? When there's hatred around. When there's so much hatred around. Who do you say I am? You are love. You are agape, unbiased love, unprejudiced love. 
that over overtakes, overthrows, that conquers, and casts out fear. Who do you say I am? When I can't even be, when I, sometimes when I don't even, when I want to hear a word from you, you're the one speaking to me. You're the one who sings over me. You're the one who ushers in the joy of your presence. This is your spirit. That's who you are. Who do you say I am? You are more than a man. You're fully God and fully man. Who do you say I am? When Satan rises his ugly head, you're the one whose foot and feet is crushing it. <laughs> I love it. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? You see, when Abba Jesus asked that, our identity lies in that. Our identity is not what people think of us. Our identity is not in our job on the earth. Our identity is not in our bad habits. Our identity is not in sin. Our identity is not in the place of the physical realm. Our identity is in the spiritual realm. Our identity is first and foremost his beloved. Our identity is redeemed. Our identity is his. His. Who do you say I am? That's what I heard the Lord say. He's a consuming fire of holiness when you feel him burning up in your bones. Shut up in your heart. You can't even shut up if you tried. Even if people would hate you for speaking, you have to speak. He's a consuming fire of holiness inside. Even if people would hate you in that moment, you couldn't help it. Because he is that consuming fire. Who do you say I am? He's asking. Who do you say he is? Is your faith increasing? He's the one ushering faith to you, even right now. He's the one that's calling you to the realms of the spirit to reign in the spirit realms. That you take charge in this physical realm. Who do you say I am? That's what I heard the Lord say. That's what he laid on my heart. Not going to add to it. I'm not going to take away from it. I'm just going to leave it right there. And ask you. Who do you say that he is? Let me see if I get the scripture here. So I can just read it out for you. Think, where is it? Who do you say I am? Cool. In Matthew 16. Okay, Matthew sixteen fifteen. When I was um when I was worshiping yesterday, Abba showed up and you could see him from the side view. For those who could see by now. Here's what he said. Matthew sixteen, take it up in verse twelve. Then understood they how he bid them not be aware of the leavened bread, but of the doctrines of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they were like pure bread that could be tainted by crap that the Pharisees and Sadducees would come with, which is like leaven, which is sin. When, see, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say I 
the son of man am so see he asked them who do people say i am what's your city saying what's your country saying who do you say i am but um who do men say i am first he said who do men say i am and they said some say you are john the baptist some said you're elijah or elias some said you're jeremiah one of the great prophets one of the prophets and he said unto them but whom do you say i am and simon peter answered and said thou art the christ the son of the living god and jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou simon but jonah for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you but my father which is in heaven the spirit spirit of the living god and i say unto thee that thou art peter and upon this rock i build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it hallelujah excuse me what can i have 17 so first he asked what was peter what was people saying to me who was gossiping and saying what who was who was um who who gave me identity with my with my physical who who was it who was it that gave me identity with my physical uh what did they say okay so they said this but who do you say i am and here's why here's why because peter had gotten in the spirit he had already received abba could use him he received in the realms of the spirit and now he was about to confirm it where he said i'll give you the keys read with me verse 19 and i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever shall bind on the earth you shall whatever you shall bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven hmm keys to bind and to loose we got to put this into practice for far too long we're just not binding and loosing and then it says he charged the disciples what that he should tell everybody that he should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ don't tell anybody why but wouldn't you want everybody to know this nope why because he wanted to spend as much time as possible around his disciples and he had to be of course of course waiting to uh, to the appointed time to go to the cross at passover so he charged them to tell no man that he was jesus the christ when you say the christ you're saying the messiah of our souls the awaited one the appointed one but if people look for identity in the realms of the physical they'll miss it just like it was written and that's what i heard him say today if they had known that it was the god of glory they crucified they would not have laid a finger on him so when you look in this the physical realm that's why god doesn't look at this he looks at this man looks at the outer but yahweh adonai Our Lord looks at their heart. So, because they judge Jesus by what he looked like, he didn't even have a house. The Son of Man had no place to lay his head. 
Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. That's why we say, Jesus, you can have my heart as your home. That's your sanctuary. And my mind as your throne. When we try to identify in the physical realm, you'll miss it in the spiritual realm. We can't be foolish unless we become foolish before God that we might become wise in front of him. That we become that foolish I'm talking about is humble. We could profess that, okay, we've been fools, that we might actually become wise and he might open our eyes to things that we have not seen because we were looking in the physical realm instead of the spiritual realm. Instead of us looking with our hearts that God is inside of, that Jesus is inside of. You have to understand. That this is how he teaches. This is what he wants. And for a time such as this. So that'll be Matthew 16, 16, which is a key. Hmm. Matthew 16, 16, write it down. Write it down. Matthew 16, 16. Amen, it's a key. Um, you can double it for 16, or you can put it in fours, like four on that side, four on the other, or you can do it in eights. So it'll be like four eights, depending on the key that you need. Kind of like the keys that he said um, he gave, which would be angels assigned to us. And I've got so many to share with you. I haven't shared with you much or many. I think one I shared with you. Out of hundreds, I'll just share them. Um, but that's what I heard him saying. That's what he laid on my heart. Who do you say I am? The moment that you can answer that question, victory will come in. The moment that you can say who he is in the moment that you need. You got a court case, he's the judge, the jury, he's the lawyer, he's the one tried and found not guilty. Hmm. Who do you say I am? People say, how can Jesus be the judge? The Bible says, all judgment has been passed on to the Son, has been given unto the Son by the Father. All judgment, which means that God is going to judge by the cross. Hmm. So when he says, who do you say I am? Answer it. Answer to the depth of your heart. Just answer it. Just listen to what your spirit mind is saying and answer it. Begin to search in the realms of the physical, um, the realms of the spirit, and leave behind the realms of the physical, so that you don't miss it, like how they missed it when they crucified God. All right. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and earlier I was sharing with um have some things and of course he's probably going to cuss it out in the morning but I did send him some scripture um, that Abba told me to send and Abba said it is sufficient that he knows him as savior right now let the revelation of him as God come gradually I mean we're running out of time but let it come so if you don't know Jesus Christ as your savior your personal Savior, the one who is everything that you need in the moment that you need. What are you waiting on? Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. Pray with me. Father God, we come to you as sinners. Say, I come to you as sinner. I'm sorry that I sinned against heaven and you. I'm sorry that it took so long, but here I am. Thank you for coming, 
or thank you for sending your son Jesus, or if you want to say thank you for coming as Jesus Christ, living in our perfect life for me, living in, um, okay, thank you for living a perfect life for me, dying in my place on the cross of Calvary for my punishment and my unrighteousness, my sins, being buried and raising from the dead on the third day. Go and tell him. Say, I forsake religion and traditions of men every way that led me away from you, Jesus. I forsake it. And just tell him. Say, wash me in your precious blood. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit that I might have identity with you. Go on. Say, I confess you now, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Almighty. I confess you now. Just say, I confess you now, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior and my Lord God. Go on. By a man's confession, is he saved or refuted? Say, be shepherd and Lord of my life. And I will follow you all the days of my life. Let me pray for you. Father, this one. You said better saved is one saved sinner than 99 righteous men in a group or 1 million men in a group beating their chest saying how good they are and they are not in need of a savior. So this one. It's by your spirit that they draw near. And it's by your spirit they will overcome. Let your, let your perfect love cast away all fear. Let your grace that is sufficient be given unto them. Your peace that surpasses all understanding, things that they understand and things that they don't understand in this world, let it give, be given unto them. Give them an unction of your Holy Spirit, Father. Lead them to the waters of baptism, that they might be baptized in the water and the Holy Spirit, that you would come upon them in a mighty way and never leave them or forsake them. Father, give them a Bible-believing person, that they might be well-nurtured in the Word, that they might be strong to stand in a day of adversity when a whole crowd or family or friends or wife or husband or children or whatever gather against them. Give them, mighty God, give them that strength. Become their strength. Become their strength with the nurturing through your word. Father, give them an unction of your Holy Spirit. Help them to know that if they were the only ones on this entire planet, you would have come and died that same horrific way for them on the cross. Because you love them that much. Father, help them to know that there is nothing that they could have done that would keep you from loving them, and giving them the chance to receive salvation. You said a righteous man falls seven times and he gets up. You're there dusting them off and helping them through, just like you help us through. Papa, I cast away sickness and disease from them now. In your name, Jesus Christ. I bind the spirit of death and sickness, of block retaliation and backlash. Send it into outer darkness and chain it up into hellfire, Jesus' name, by your blood. And I speak, Father, that even now, O Damushelishua, that angels would encamp around them on every side. I send, I release angels to them on their properties and all around them to keep them in all their ways. Father, help them to know that angels are rejoicing in heaven for one more saved. Beloved, 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 we welcome you. 
We welcome you to the kingdom of heaven. We welcome you. We welcome you. It's like like three eighteen here, but come here for a holy ghost hug. We welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Welcome, welcome. We welcome you. Welcome to even this ministry, water to wine, prophetic international, king of kings ministries. We love you, and you can call here your home if you don't have a church to belong to. We are a prophetic ministry walking under the, you know, the ministry of Jesus Christ. And uh, we welcome you to be a part of that, that you would be saving souls wherever you're from, that you would understand the identity in Christ, and you would bring people to understand their identity in Christ. Reach out to us as you say amen, we say amen with you. Please don't lose faith. Cling to it in this hour. It's a darkening hour and faith is, people are losing faith. Don't let what you see around you take away from who you are in Christ. Don't let what you hear around you take away from who you are in Christ. Not even when we don't stand strong because it's not us. We're weak so that Jesus is strong in us. All right. He loves you. Who do you say I am? Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Jesus loves you more than anyone ever could, ever would, or ever will. Love back on him. Shalom, shalom. Share this. If this was inspirational for you, if this, did, if this encouraged you, your first work is to share it. Go on, just share the life. Like and share. In Jesus' name. So that people can, more people can see. And those are mosquitoes. All right. So shalom, shalom. Shalom.